Okay, welcome back everyone, and welcome to Sonic Adventure 2 Stage Tutorials. Today I'm going to be taking you through Metal Harbor, just doing a quick beginner's introduction to the stage, just showing you really how to get through the stage in one piece. And the target time for this, for a beginner I'd say, is going to be around in the 145 to 150 region. If I can get under like 145 then, using just very basic beginner strats, that'll be very good. So I'm just going to get started, and we'll see what we can do. You can see I've got an input viewer on the left, so you can see exactly what I'm doing at all times. So to start off the stage, you just want to be just holding up pretty much. You can just take this loop as normal. Okay, I got an accidental light dash there, which you won't have at this point in the stage, so that's like fine. Um, this is just still the basic route for the stage. And you can just go forward into this checkpoint, take your springs. So these enemies are skippable, but you need quite a precise spin dash jump to make it, so you can just do that instead. And in a story run, you'd go up here to get the light dash. Like, this is pretty much non-negotiable, you always need to get the light dash, so this is just worth doing. And once you have it, just come straight back down here, and we have this light dash trail, the first light dash trail of the game. An important note for using light dashes that even beginners can pay attention to, for this trail in particular, you actually want to... Um, use no directional input once you're on the light dash trail like get onto the light dash trail but before you exit the light dash trail you want to have no directional input i'm going to um do it incorrectly here and then take a death do it again without directional input so you can see the difference so if i'm holding up when i exit it you can see i get flung up in the air like that and that wastes a not insubstantial amount of time for no real good reason what you can instead do is once you're on the light dash trail you can just go neutral stick and you'll just drop straight down after exiting the light dash trail. So that's something that you can do for absolute free and it's just very easy to do in general. Once you get off the light dash trail, you're going to be met with these three speed pads here. And there's a couple of different ways you can do these. Uh, generally, the, fa the fastest way to do them is on the right side, but a very basic way to do them is to go towards the left here. And there are speed pads that keep you going here. So there's very little movement required on the left path like that, and then you just come to this next light dash trail here. We should just go through as normal. Again with this light dash trail here. This half pipe like is skippable, but it's quite minor. Nice! Not getting the correct loop speed there. That was interesting. Because my inputs were a little different. But if you just hold up through this loop as normal, then again, wow. So I guess if you're going to take the um half loop route here. Don't avoid the speed pads here, since, yeah, those will help align you with enough speed there. Whereas, if you end up jumping over these speed pads to use the skip, which is going around the loop, just by homing attacking around the loop, then your speed's going to be different, that's not really going to work quite as well. For the purpose of just going absolutely basic, you can just continue to hold up here. You can choose to jump over that zipper there. Because as with the light dash trail, if you just run onto the zipper here, you're going to get a lot of forced air time, which you can't mitigate. Like, you're in the air for a good couple of seconds there. Whereas, you can just jump over it and progress as normal. Just somersault under the barrier and take these pulleys as normal. As normal, hopefully. So I'll demonstrate again, just jumping over the zipper. And then we just take the pulleys as normal. The second loop here, really not much to talk about if you're just going basic here. Um, important beginner detail for these three speed pads here. You do have these three speed pads. And obviously you can choose to run into whichever one you want. You should generally run into, if you can help it, the middle one or the right hand one. You want to avoid um, running into this left hand one if you can because it actually gives you a ton more speed, which sounds like it would be helpful. But because you're coming up to this ramp here, that speed then translates into, again, a lot more airtime. Like, you can see how much I get launched there. And if you compare it to just taking that, it's a lot less airtime. And the same is true with the right speed pad as well. That it's just a lot less air. So then to compare it once more to the left-hand one, but you're just in the air for a lot longer, and it generally loses a bit of time. We have one more somersault barrier here, and then just one more enemy trail. And then we just come to the rocket platform. 
Um, so the rocket platform just wides around in a clockwise fashion. You can see that you're going to have to go right like here and then go up and go around once more. You can cut off a small part of this by jumping over to this spring right here, which cuts off um, a couple of sides of this. And it does cut the size of this down a little bit. When you land on these speed pads here, like on each of these corner pieces, the one detail that you want to try and make sure of is not to land on the very left edge of these speed pads. Because when they launch you forward, if you're on the very left edge, you're just going to hit this corner wall here, and that does stop your momentum dead, like this. So, if possible, try to just clip the center or the right-hand side of the speed pads, and they'll launch you through without too much problem. For the... your target is obviously the spring right here. There's some weird things that can happen around here with collision detection, but as long as you are in close proximity to the spring with a straight line to it, like nothing in between you and the spring, you should be able to homing attack towards it with too much difficulty. Like that. Now that you're on this rocket, there is actually stuff you can do during this section. You want to be mashing the A button as much as you can here, because there comes a point in this cutscene where... Currently, I have no control over Sonic. At a certain point in this cutscene, I'm actually going to gain control of Sonic. And when you do an A input while you have control of Sonic, he will let go of the handle early. And that can save a couple of seconds on its own. So pretty much right now, I'm just going to start mashing the A button. And you'll just have to take my word for it that Sonic there did release the handle much quicker than, <clears throat> than you would normally expect. So... If you want to take this last loop as quick as you can, without skipping any part of the loop, again, it's the middle speed pad here that you want to try and aim for if you can help it. This one will give you the most speed, and from there you can just hold straight up and you will do this last loop without any problems. So that's basic Metal Harbor in a nutshell. I'm just going to restart, use that beginner route with not too many bells and whistles, pull it all together just in one attempt. Hopefully, I estimate it's, like I say, probably going to be around a 145 to a 150 time we'll be looking at. I might be a little off because I don't really use this route too often, but we'll see. So again, for the first part of the stage at least, you can easily get away with just holding up and doing nothing else. You can even do a spin dash if you want to be fancy. Just take the spring as normal if you want to be very safe and not use any spin dash jumps. So you'll always need to go up here and get the light shoes. And then take the light dash trail, neutral stick to fall quickly. Use the left hand path here just for safe consistency if you like. Let's assume we're not doing the skip here, but we can skip this zipper by jumping over it. And let's assume we're not being fancy by skipping the loop. And taking one of the quicker speed pads there. Come on, Sonic, move. So just be careful to not hit the sides by being on the very left side there. And once you're on the rocket, you can just start mashing the A button. And then finally, as we come to the last loop, just try and hit the middle one if you can, and then just hold straight up, and you'll be out the stage with no problems. And pretty much right in the middle of the time scale that I estimated, like somewhere between 145 and 150, and we come out with a 147.5. There's pretty much no closer to right in the middle of that range that you could have been, so not too bad an estimation. So you can see that just playing very, very basic, not even using much movement tech, but just making sure that you're keeping moving through the stage at all times. As a beginner, you can come out with under a 150 in Metal Harbor without too much difficulty. So that is a beginner's Metal Harbor in a nutshell. If there are any questions just you have about the stage, feel free to leave any comments or 
get me on Discord, ask any questions you'd like, I'm more than happy to help out. And hopefully this helps you get started on playing Metal Harbor. So I'll see you guys later.